Today I'm in the middle of uh, uh, working on some A5s. A good customer came in the other day and brought me in a jar of beets. And uh, they're not bad at all, really. I was raised with round beets. My mom canned them. And uh, these things are really good. But there's not a single soul in this shop that likes these things one bit. But anyway, we're not here to talk about beets today. We're going to talk about the ring setting on the Auto 5. There's been a lot of debate out there, uh, back and forth on the Internet. And I thought I'd established that a long time ago as to what is and what isn't right on an auto five ring setting. But I guess we're gonna have to go over it again because there's still some questions coming up. So let's do this one more time. Uh, I didn't get a spring, but we don't really need it much for what I'm talking about here. But anyway, so we're gonna go over the ring setting one more time on a Browning Auto Five. So you slide your spring on the gun. I have a spring laying on my bench here that that's not going to work because it's 1148, but you slide your spring on. That's the way you always do it. And then to set the gun up for heavy loads, you slide on the steel ring bevel up. Like that. Here's the right one. Steel ring goes on first, bevel up. Okay, we've gone through this before. Now, your bronze piece goes on next, bevel up. This is the way it's done. Now, something I want to talk to you a little bit about this bronze piece I've got here in my little hand. Uh, there's a steel spring band that goes around the uh, bronze piece. I like to line up the slots. Uh, you'll get them, you'll see them quite often. They're all shuffled around. I just like to line up the slots. Why do I do that? I don't know. They just did it down at Browning, so I do it. And when you put it on your gun, and this one's not tight at all, when you put it on the gun, if it's too tight, I have a tool here that we've made up that we expand that ring because you don't want this ring to go on real tight. You want this ring to slide on with just a little resistance. Not real tight, not real loose. If it's too loose, it'll just fall off. Okay, my camera guy just hand me a spring. Spring goes on. Steel ring, bevel up. Bronze ring, bevel up. And there again, we talked about this, this spring that goes around the bronze piece. And if, uh, if this bronze piece slides on too tight, find you something and open that thing up a little bit to where it slides on just a little resistance. That gun is now set up for heavy loads. Now, if you want to shoot light loads in that gun, I don't care what they've talked about or what you've heard out there on the internet, here's what you do. Take all that off. Take your steel ring, turn it upside down, with the bevel down so the flat is on the top, and slide it on your tube. This is your storage spot right here. Now, if you put it in your pocket, your wife's going to find that in the washer in a few days. Or you're going to put it in your dresser drawer and lose it. So store it underneath the spring. Slide it on. Bevel down for spring on. That's, that's for light loads. Now for heavy loads, spring goes on. Well, we just talked about heavy loads, didn't we? Yeah, okay, so we're talking about light loads. Okay, we talked about that. So we're going to set it up for light loads. Put your, put your friction ring down on the bottom, spring on, and then your bronze piece goes back on, bevel up. Now that's set for light loads. Now, while I'm at it today, let's talk about the magnums. Uh, Browning, this is not a magnum gun, but the spring, this, for video purposes, this will work just fine. This is 16 gauge. Uh, Browning 20 gauge and 12 gauge magnums use the same ring setup. They're a little small ring. Here's Here's a 12 gauge ring. See the difference? See these little small uh, magnum rings? I bet you half the guns I buy off the internet or wherever come in when they're magnums and are missing several of these. And that's because guys are trying to shoot two and three quarters in their magnum gun. Browning will tell you those guns were never designed to shoot two and three quarters, so they don't guarantee them to shoot them at all. However, they generally do. 90% of them I see come in, you can kind of set them up, and generally they'll shoot lighter loads not real light stuff you got to use something like a two and three quarter magnum or something to make them work because the spring's really heavy on a magnum but let's talk about the ring set up on a magnum put your spring on put steel ring on bevel up put a uh, put your bronze piece on next this bevel on both sides so it doesn't matter which way you put it take another steel ring put it with the bevel down that way it's going to work against that bronze piece Put another steel ring on, bevel up. 
and put your bronze piece on. That gun is now set up for three inch. Now there's a bevel on your barrel ring that's gonna work on this, this top bronze piece and all that together is gonna to squeeze that down tighter on the tube and slow it down. Now, to shoot two and three quarter, remove everything. You won't be able to store anything down on the, the uh, underneath here because you can't put on all this. You can't put on that many rings and all, it just, you can't do it. So yeah, you're gonna to to put these in your pocket and that's probably where you'll lose them in your dresser drawer. But anyway, to set it up for two and three quarter, ring goes, spring goes on. One steel ring, friction ring goes on, bevel up as always, and one bronze piece. And it's now set up to shoot two and three quarter. And they generally will shoot them. Now, sometimes you have to get something a little, you won't necessarily shoot real light trap loads and that sort of thing, but you have to experiment around. Sometimes if you get something a little heavier, generally it'll shoot them. Browning doesn't guarantee them to shoot that way, but uh, they will. So that's, uh, that's the way you set your rings up on a Browning Auto 5. Uh, just forget all the other things you've heard about it. The important thing on those is keep a good spring in that gun. These things really collapse. And you need to keep a good action spring in these guns because they really collapse. And that's all in my rebuild kit that we have online. And uh, if you have an older A5, you've been shooting for years, uh, they they need springs. There's no getting around that. So that's uh, hopefully that'll end the debate on the friction ring setup on the Browning Auto 5. I'll be back with my beats now.